so Dr. Tawaji, when you see patients with, with the family history, like do you refer them to genetic counseling? Like no. what? Yeah, so we've actually streamlined a way to do genetic testing in the medical oncology side, and then we refer them for positive results. We're finding that this streamlined way to do genetic testing on the oncology side is making less of an overflow for our genetic counselors. And so for that reason, we're only sending those patients that have positive results. And then we're also, if a, if a patient wants to discuss something with the genetic counselor, even if their results are negative or if they have variants of unknown significance, um, they're welcome to see the genetic counselor as well. Um, so I think I, I agree with everything that was said. And you know, it's important to know that most patients that have prostate cancer though do not have a family history. But that being said, it's still important to consider all of these. Definitely, without a doubt. Um, so the, the next thing I want to talk about is really the PSA test and who should really get one. And this is something that um, has had um, some controversy regarding who is the best candidate to get a PSA test and um, should we be screening everyone? Um, and, you know, really when it when it comes down to is the PSA test is really a blood test um, that helps us detect prostate cancer. Um, you know, but there are other reasons that this can be elevated and we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail after this. Um, you know, but people, you know, that should potentially get the PSA test are those um, between the ages of 40 to 55 that may have a first degree relative like we talked about with prostate cancer, um, you know, to extend family members with prostate cancer and then African Americans like we discussed as well. And then those that are, you know, in the 55 to 69 range, just because we know that um, those above the age of 55 may be at increased risk of prostate cancer as well. Um, any thoughts that you guys have about anyone else that should potentially consider getting a PSA test? I mean, I think in, so typically like over the age of 70, you don't get PSA testing. Um, but I think the, again, in that region also, if a patient is having significant symptoms and the patient has a good uh, lifestyle and, and they are pretty physically doing very well i think it it can it 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 is something to discuss as well with your patients um as per the uspstf guidelines you know above 70 you you essentially don't get those testing done but i think that is again a discussion between the physician and the patient um you know i uh, what what are your guys thoughts on this yeah, yeah. oh go ahead Karen. yeah no i agree and i think it's also important at any age to have that risk benefit discussion of the possibility of false positive, which I know we'll get into in terms of other reasons the PSA can be elevated, the need for biopsies for a benign condition that's not cancer related, and you know the emotional toil that can happen with going through that process for potentially a benign condition. Right, definitely. I think that's that's definitely a discussion. I think that you should definitely have with your primary care physician with your urologist, whoever is um, having this, there's multiple um, physicians that can have this discussion with you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, talking about, you know, what is a normal PSA, there really isn't a, a true normal PSA level, but in the past four and below was considered normal, but, you know, some people can have slightly elevated levels between four to 10 without having a diagnosis of prostate cancer, but the higher the number, the more likely that we should start to investigate um, for other causes, um, including prostate cancer as well. And so, you know, the other reasons why a PSA may be elevated may include an enlarged prostate, um, you know, that Dr. Chetwani had mentioned, the condition that's called benign um, hyperplastic, um, or benign hyperplastic, wow, I can't say that, so PPS, <laughs> yeah. prostatitis, um, which is inflammation of the prostate, and then um, prostate cancer itself can elevate the PSA. Um, recent ejaculation um, can cause that number to be elevated. Um, if a provider's doing a digital rectal exam, um, that can also elevate the PSA. And then um, some have shown, um, although a little bit more controversial, some have shown that sometimes bicycle riding and putting pressure on that area, um, you know, where the prostate resides um, may cause some inflammation that may elevate the PSA level as well. Yeah, and I think typically, like, if you are not riding the bike for, like, 30 minutes to one hour, this typically wouldn't happen. But, yeah, this is something to be wary of. And I think uh, the, our urologist folks are quite good at counseling the patients before they're going to have a PSA test about all these things. Right.